Uh, and for 20 years, I've been able to be a professional voice actor for Calgary. <laughs> I don't know how these things happen, but they do, and I want to make sure that that's demystified because, you know, I've got friends in the crowd that do this too, Mike Anthony, uh, and, and, you know, friends that I might not know yet that are also doing this because during COVID, of course, we've had this enormous opportunity to uh, work remotely if we can make a little bit of control in our home environments, and a lot of people are still off a $50 USB mic finding a way to contribute. But of course, the more control you can uh, have, the, the better you're going to be able to participate in the world options of the ever ongoing growing needs of voice actors and authentic representation. I think we've all been uh, maybe more aware of that in the last few years, but what a great thing that we're wanting more and more people that represent more and more things, and therefore there's more and more for all types of people which is great because there's things for me and there's things that aren't for me and there's things that are for you and they're also not for me and that's great so that we can all have opportunities to contribute because connection and expression is what we're all about as humans and storytelling is kind of the way that we try and share that meaningfully and as characters and animes and video games or your favorite audiobook readers and, and narration specialists it's a really cool medium but I'm not going to pretend that it's easy so I'm your colleague, I'm your neighbor, uh, maybe we'll become friends, but the, the, the reason for this is that I recognize that a lot of people are like, that looks super fun, how do I? And you are right to think that it is fun and wonder how you do. And if I can answer any and all of that over the next 45 minutes to an hour, please, ask away. I can regale you with dumb tales about, when I was doing that and this and the other thing, of course, it's really fun to be on projects and really fun to see how they have impact in the world, like getting a start in Dragon Ball. That's bonkers. I don't know how that happened and I'm so grateful for it. And from Dragon Ball GT to Dragon Ball to Mega Man to Hunter x Hunter to all kinds of really neat projects and, and IPs that, that already had this known thing in the world. Little me from Calgary was being asked, you, you wanna do it? Hell yeah, I wanna do that. And I couldn't believe the opportunities that we are starting to see grow and grow and now continue to grow. Thanks, Sean. Everybody knows Sean? Yeah. Uh, uh, Odafest uh, a, a team, team member from, from so team many. Sean. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, thanks. Yeah. I'll let you know. All right. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Interrupting, making it better. And Jasmine and Nancy from Odafest who are taking such good care of the guests this weekend, please. Hi, Nancy. Woo! The problem with Odafist is that it's full of nice people, so <laughs> get ready to meet a bunch of nice, weird, passionate people. That's what this is all about, Luigi. <laughs> um, so this is as much of a conversation as it can be a Q&A panel. I I'm not here to, to, to stand uh, uh, apart from you and say, you know what, the cool thing about me is uh, I, I, I love my life and I'm so grateful that as a professional actor I was also able to foray into to voice acting and to now be able to share some of that with you guys because while it is sometimes a bit ethereal, how does that happen and how do you do it? After 20 years I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to keep talking about it, I get to keep coming back to Odefest, I get to keep sharing it with the people that matter to me and, and hopefully, um, of course, thanks to COVID, with people all over the world. I, I, I do four sessions a week now with, with uh, dozens of students all over the world where they just want to know how this works. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, working on YouTube projects, working on Disney Plus projects, uh, working on uh, Funimation projects, because we can do this by remote now and because we have these, these, uh, these amazing ways of creating decent infrastructure for a pretty nominal investment. And while that might not be for everyone, everyone has something they're trying to express and trying to communicate and trying to be understood better by. And while voice acting skills are great skills, they're also life skills, they're also communication skills. And I get nervous too. I still get scared. I still get stage fright. I came off that stage and I had the whole jittery thing because I was not used to it anymore. I'm very used to sitting in front of my computer and talking to lovely people, but that really gives you a lot of control. And so for anyone in this room that suffers from stress, anxiety, uh, challenges of just being unique and neurodivergent and touching many spectrums as we do, it can be one of the greatest art forms for taking control. Because you're anonymous, no one has to see you, 
No one has to know your name. You can be as weird as you want to be in that little <laughs> box. You can make it your holodeck. You scream, you cry, you cry scream. And the catharsis of that, when we don't have necessarily the opportunity to be as emotionally present in our daily lives, where it's not really celebrated, the more vulnerable and raw and authentic and weird you're willing to be, the more valuable you are in this industry. Which again, can be a really nice reinforcement that you should be you. When you're more you, we can hire you more often. When you're more you, we clearly understand what we're going to get. And you can have a hundred thousand voices if you want to, but you can also have one and speak really authentically from that place. And you probably know some of those VAs. Some of the most well-paid VAs in the world have pretty much one voice, right? And you go, hey, that's them again. And yet, they're still engaging, they're still interesting, they still make us go, that's relatable, I feel, I feel the mirror of, of what it means to exist being held up, and I see myself in some of these ways. So, I can just talk ad nauseum, I can, but I'd much rather know, what do, you, what do you guys want to know about the industry? What do you guys want to know about how it works, or the life of a VA, or how to get involved, or where to go, or what to do? Let's start with you. Um, my biggest question about the industry is, what is the biggest thing that you have learned being in the industry? Well, I used to think it was about being technically perfect. And I think it was really helpful to know that actually work on your skills, but stand on top of them and then see, see what happens when you're open to the possibilities. I think whenever we get the opportunity to witness media and it feels staged and rehearsed and kind of safe or predictable, we don't tend to engage very well with that. But when it gets to a place of poignancy and vulnerability and rawness, and we go, oh, geez, oh, why am I feeling stuff? It's a cartoon. And we go, well, that's what mattered more than, wow, listen to their crisp, perfect diction. Who cares? At the end of the day, who cares? Those are skills we stand upon. But it's been really helpful to get more and more comfortable being an authentic, fallible, weirdo human who can tell stories back to fellow humans and say, and I don't have all the answers, and I don't know everything, but I also feel that, I also know a bit about that, and how that connection is way more meaningful, way more gratifying for both the artist and the audience to feel like, right, we are, we are complicated beings trying to find connection, trying to be heard and understood, and so that shift of mentality of like doing good work to being, being comfortable or brave enough to, even when scared, go, this is valuable, it's, it's worth it, it's hard, sometimes it's really uncomfortable, and yet, that makes it matter more. So, again, to go back to the equalization as to why would we do this, why do we want to do this, sure, it's fun to be in a video game that people are like, oh, I'm playing your character, that's super rad, and to be paid for it, my god, what a nice thing, but at the end of the day, it's also this really human connection thing, which, hopefully everyone can get behind that they might not feel comfortable talking at the kitchen table, boardroom table, classroom, church, I don't know where people want to talk these days. <laughs> but that, that this kind of empowers you to remind yourself that it matters, your perspective matters, the way you have experienced the world matters. And when we put that, that engine of us into these characters, it's why I'll never be in competition with you and you'll never be in competition with me. And we should keep focusing on how am I being a con contribution to storytelling and connection that includes me. I'm the engine of it. I might put a mask on. I might have a completely different type of character or, or, or persona that's being presented, but I will always be the engine of it. And so even if their reality is very different than mine, what, what's, what's relatable about that? What's human about that? We currently are only telling stories to other humans. We are very self-indulgent. Uh, we, we have to wonder if anyone's paying attention up there, but they're probably still going, not yet, they're not ready, they're not ready. But <laughs> while we get better at communicating to, our, to each other, and while this medium continues to expand how we know each other and know of the different ways to experience sentient life, these are times to really curate, well, what is that like for you? Because it's going to be different. We're all sponges of our existence and from that we create a filter of we process and share and even if it's plagiarized and stolen and 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 completely based on other things it's still now unique based on that process which I think in a lot of ways is really daunting because it's so overwhelmingly big but it's super freeing too if you can kind of lean into that and go I'm trying to cry at more movies because I'm gonna be empathetic and vulnerable more often but 
Isn't that a cool way to live where you're actually affected? I know I'll never be the same. Shook my world so hard again. Wish I washed away my sins. He's a dead man walking, blank staring. Never should have been surprised when they shot him down, cold blood to the ground.